Hi, my name is Mr Campbell, Head of Science at Stockport Academy. Uh, one of the big differences between primary science and secondary science is uh, that when you come to secondary school you get to work in a lab like this, uh, which allows you to develop and um, enhance your understanding of science through practical activity. Now for many years now uh, I've been putting on a science show to demonstrate some of the more fun and exciting demos we've got that um, show the principles of science, so I just wanted to share a few of my favourites with you. So first demo I'll show you is one called Elephant's Toothpaste. So inside the vessel here we've got some hydrogen peroxide and some washing up liquid. Now hydrogen peroxide uh, is a chemical that breaks down into water and oxygen and with oxygen being a gas we get these little bubbles and because the washing up liquid's in there it, it traps those bubbles so we get those bubbles forming on the top. Very exciting, yes. Not really, okay. But what we can do is we can use something called a catalyst. Now catalysts speed up chemical reactions. So if we add a catalyst into here, it should speed up this reaction and we should be able to see a few more bubbles. Okay, so let's have a look. So the catalyst made it go a lot faster and we've now got a lot more bubbles. Okay, I don't know if you can see this on camera as well, there's steam being given off because this is an exothermic reaction that gives off heat. So there we go, that's our elephant's toothpaste. Okay, so this next demo is called uh, Many Liquids from One Bottle. So this is my one bottle, and from it I'm going to produce many liquids, okay? So I've got some wine here, and uh, occasionally on an evening I would like a small uh, glass of red wine. So, there we go, a nice glass of red wine. Obviously, Wine isn't great to be having all the time, you need to uh, rehydrate, so sometimes I'll just have a water. Um, but water is not the most exciting of drinks, uh, so actually need a bit of calcium as well. So a glass of milk is also good. But milk you can make a bit more exciting as well. So rather than just having milk, sometimes I'll have a bit of a raspberry milkshake. And then sometimes I like a bit of fizz as well. So the last drink I can uh, produce for my bottle is a nice glass of fizzy lemonade. So there you have it, my many liquids uh, from that one bottle. Uh, however, obviously this is a science experiment. Uh, I couldn't actually drink any of these. This has all been done through chemical reactions. Um, so this is uh, the substance in the bottle and it's um, in its sort of natural state but then when it reacts it can have a colour change to go colourless. Uh, in these ones we've got a reaction that will produce a precipitate which is a solid which gives it that cloudy look and then in this one we've got a reaction uh, that will also produce a gas which is where we get the fizz from from the lemonade. Okay so there you have it, many liquids from one bottle. So now I'm going to make my own fire extinguisher. Um, this demo illustrates the principles of the fire triangle. So in order to have a fire, you need three things. You need a fuel, you need heat, and you need oxygen. Okay, so at the minute, these candles, the wax of the fuel, there's heat there to give the flame, and there's oxygen in the air around us. Now, inside this beaker here, I've got some calcium carbonate, which when I react with acid, produces carbon dioxide. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some acid into this. I'm going to cover it up, and as the carbon dioxide is being produced, that's going to fill this beaker with carbon dioxide and we're going to use that as our fire extinguisher. So that's fully reacted now, and my beaker is full of carbon dioxide. Now carbon dioxide as a gas is more dense than air, so I can actually pour it. I'm going to pour it from the top here, down our tube, and you'll see as it travels down, the candles go out, okay? And that's because, as I said, with our fire triangle, we need three things for uh, something to burn, fuel, oxygen, and heat. And by the carbon dioxide covering these in a blanket as it goes down, it's taken away the oxygen, so the flame goes out. So that is my fire extinguisher. 
So I'm going to show you something called the Lycopodium gun. Now this is Lycopodium, it's a spore. Uh, I'm going to pour some onto my heat proof mat there. And just to show you that when I light it, uh, in this case, nothing much happens. Now the Lycopodium will react with oxygen in the air, but when it's in a mound like this, the oxygen can only get to the Lycopodium on that top layer. Okay, now if we can spread it out a bit, we increase its surface area and we get a uh, much more exciting reaction. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm pouring some into here. I'm going to blow this through the flame and because it's uh, spreading out as I blow through it, we should see something a bit more dramatic. And that's my Lycopodium gun. So the demo I'm going to show you now is called a burning 20 pound note, okay, and again it's looking at this principle of the fire triangle. There's three things needed for fire, fuel, heat and oxygen. So I'm going to dip this uh, 20 pound note uh, into a fuel, which is ethanol, and I'm going to put it into the heat of the Bunsen flame, or with the oxygen in the room, the ethanol is going to burn, and then the note itself will act as a fuel and burn as well. Now as I said, if, um, if you take away any of the three things from the five uh, triangle, you no longer get fire. So this time what I'm going to do with my note is I'm going to dip it into this beak here, which is water. All right. Now, what this is going to do, when I hold it in my flame now, okay, rather than the note getting hot, the heat is being used to evaporate off the water and the paper itself doesn't get hot and doesn't burn, so that protects it and there's no flame this time. Now, this last one, what I'm going to try and do now is to get a burning 20 pound note that I want to be able to keep this note at the end of it, okay? Now as you can see we've got a nice flame there but the note itself is still intact, alright? The reason being what was in this last beaker is actually a mixture of ethanol and water. So the ethanol um, burns easily when I put it into the flame but the water is on the note, stops the note itself from getting hot uh, and the note doesn't burn. So that was my burning 20 pound note. This is one that will illustrate this idea of surface area uh, getting you a, a bigger reaction. So I've got some icing sugar here and I've got a Bunsen burner down there and what I'm going to do, I'm going to pour the icing sugar down Again, because it's spreading out, you've got that surface area, all of the icing sugar is able to react, and we should get something quite dramatic again. Okay, so let's give it a go. So the last one I'm going to show you uh, is called methane bubbles, and this is my favourite. Okay, so I've got a washing up bowl here filled with water and washing up liquid, and I've got a pipe running from my gas tap into here. So I'm going to turn the gas on, and as I do, it's bubbling through here, and it's getting trapped in those washing up liquid bubbles. So they are my methane bubbles. Okay, so I'm going to scoop these up now, and this has taken years of training, mind control. And that was my methane bubbles. Now, often people say to me, does that hurt? And I say yes, because I like to try and look brave. Uh, but actually it doesn't hurt at all on those same idea that um, I've got my hand nice and wet, so my hand doesn't get hot enough. Um, the bubbles just burn off really quickly and my hand doesn't get hot enough to burn, okay? So that's my methane, methane bubbles, last one. I hope you've really enjoyed all of those. Uh, thank you very much for uh, watching and look forward to seeing you to do some science at the Academy in the future. Thank you.